Vanuatu is in the middle of a mini boom, fueled largely by Australians. Tourists, tax exiles and now property investors. The growing number of foreigners are taking a toll, but the real rhythms of Vanuatu are never far away. In the hills overlooking Port Vila Airport, the most developed part of Vanuatu, an ancient ceremony is unfolding. Chief Nunu Napariki Mala is handing over power today. His son George will take over his father's title, lands and authority. And will he be a good chief, do you think? I hope so. Yes, he'll learn a lot of me. And the most important part of being a good chief is protecting the tribal lands for the Nivans, the indigenous people of Vanuatu. The loss of land to developers has become the hottest issue in Vanuatu today. Many people come here with millions and millions of money. And I say, no. You tell me cut them out. You don't want to sell this? No, I don't want to sell. This is very valuable land. It's close to uh, Port Vila. Port Vila, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, very rich land. Under the constitution, the new chief Nunu Napariki Mala can't sell his land outright. It must be kept for its indigenous owners. But in recent years, a system has evolved granting 75-year leases to property developers, many of them Australian. It's the biggest forum held in Vanuatu since independence 26 years ago. A week-long summit for politicians, chiefs and landowners to discuss the recent alienation of tribal lands. Of course everything should be reviewed. Land reforms in recent years have led to the creation of a formal land registry transferring customary unregistered or communal land into individual titles. A system that has created, for the first time, individual title owners who can do deals with developers. And there's no shortage of them coming in. Ricky Taleo is from Pengo, a large village near Port Vila, a village cursed with a beautiful coastline. <coughs> Ricky's sister is getting married today in Pengo. The whole village will walk her and her possessions from her parents' house to her new home and vegetable garden. Um, they're about to uh, take the, my sister up to your home, a new home. But land is running out at Pengo for events like these. Some families have no land left to settle their children upon. Massive amounts have been leased for resorts and white holiday homes. Effectively strangling the village, according to Ricky's father, James. The buyers come and uh, buy the land and we just like live in the uh, centre of uh, uh, the whole development around us and then uh, you're, we're not sure. You're, you're an island. That's right. You're an island right. now, amongst the suburbs. That's right. James says he will never sell his family's land. But in the current land rush, that decision can sometimes be taken out of the hands of traditional owners. Graham Pattis vowed never to sell his land, half a kilometre of beachfront, directly in front of the village. So then suddenly, like, like this land... Just 50 metres from the village, this was coconuts and bushland just a few months ago, harvested, used and enjoyed by the whole village. And it's just next to the village? It's just next to the village. So you say this is your land. When did you first find out that it had been sold? When, well, you know, it's sold. When you see the bulldozers starting to get bulldozed, and they're making new roads, and you say, hey, hey, something's happening here, and then you go, and 
It's sad because we don't have money to tackle, you know, disorders. But, but your family didn't know it was sold until you saw the bulldozers? Yes. Another family had this land registered without Graham's knowledge and sold the lease almost immediately to an Australian developer. 275,000. And if you keep on going, he's only lot number five. Graham is mounting a court action to be recognised as the true owner. But even if he wins, he cannot stop the development. The lease will be binding. Graham's family will be entitled to a small annual rent. But 1,500 people in the village, including him, will be locked out of this land and the ocean it leads to. Incredibly, the title extends right out over the rich fishing reef. I'm not, I'm not allowed to walk through. I can't even walk on the beach. I can't even put a canoe across because it's private property. But I mean, what happened to the Vanuatu way of life? All of this from here, coming up this way, down here. It's gone. It's gone. It's yeah. gone. And except for mine. Kalarip Sope, a senior man in Pango, estimates that more than 75% of their coastal land has been lost. All of this is gone. And we, cannot, we can't longer come here because it's, it's all gone. It's been reclaimed, the land has been reclaimed as you can see these rocks, which I do not agree, totally agree with. Within the next month, the main swimming and fishing beach at the very entrance to the village will disappear as well, thanks to another Australian development. Do you feel comfortable coming down to this uh, beach now, you know, with uh, the tourists and other property? No, 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 I, I, I'm not, I'm not comfortable and I'm not happy because uh, till they're spoiling our culture. This is why I used to come and get my fish. This is why I used to come and get my shells. And it's free. It's free. I don't, I don't buy, uh, do, to, to pay anything. But now it's, it's gone. Now it's gone. Calarip has a small piece of coastal land which he's determined to keep for his children. Which I want and I will not sell it. Yeah. Sell it. Whatever. 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 Yeah. Whatever is even millions, millions, I want. I won't sell it. Yeah. He's keen to show it to me, but is even keener to get to the land summit. He's very interested in hearing the next speaker. It's always easy to blame the outsider for our problems. Douglas Patterson, estate agent and developer, talks on behalf of the property sector. If a landowner offers to sell a lease, the buyer isn't doing anything wrong if he agrees to buy it. It's not an easy message to sell or an easy crowd to face. So how long has this, uh, this little boom been going on? Uh, probably the last two or three years, uh, four years possibly it started pretty much following the, the worldwide trend and I guess also following an Australian trend. In particular, yeah. yeah the, um, the majority of our investors and property buyers are Australians. As a tax haven, there are few statistics available on the Australians who are buying here, but it's not hard to see what the attractions are. When it comes to land, it's really just your average Aussie battler somebody who's got a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousand, that's all they, they would have, they want to invest it here. It can't get them the same property back home or anything like it. Ideal all residential area. Aussie battlers so hungry for waterfront may be getting so some bargains, home, the but there's a price to be paid by the villagers who surround them. The new land are losing their land, they're losing it to developers, they're losing it to people like you and to uh, the Australians and New Zealanders that are coming here. Yeah, I mean, and that's in some way understandable. Um, at the same time, uh, you can't sell something and then think that it's still yours, though the decision to sell that land is made by landowners and not anybody else. Nobody forces someone to lease his land. Patterson doesn't pull his punches in explaining the virtues of the market system. This forum now poses a serious threat to both the shady developers who are flocking into Vanuatu as well as reputable agents like him. You only have yourself to blame. But it's a message that seems a bit rich to Kalarip Sope. Patterson is subdividing a piece of Sope's beach and there's nothing he can do to stop it. I'll show you my landmark. Yeah. This beach, it's mine. It's mine. Not for much longer though, by the looks of it. Well, you're right. 
After a two-year legal battle, Sope has been recognised by the highest court in the country as the true owner of this land, after another family had their name placed on the land register. The other family granted a 75-year lease to Douglas Patterson for his subdivision. And despite their now erroneous title, that lease is binding. When we uh, acquired that title, we acquired it from the registered lessor. He had gone through the legitimate process and he had acquired had title. Name, name put on the title. Yeah. Yeah. Not us. As the owner, Kalarip Sope will be due a small rent for his property, but he can't stop the development. A suburb will soon be here, with fences, dogs and guards, to keep him off his land for 75 years. So, you, so you've lost, really? Of course. But really this, this is lost. I mean, I've lost it. But not all stories of loss involve Nivans. Feel disappointed more than anything else. Of Mike Jessup and his group of Melbourne investors have sunk millions into a land lease, which landowners are now trying to evict them from. And this is what we get from the village. Uh, he's been stoned and threatened. Today, he's taking back roads to avoid the roadblocks that have sprung up to keep him out. But we haven't done anything wrong, so if anyone does anything, it's there in the wrong, not me. Jessup's group is planning a large residential development here, aimed largely at the Australian market. But that looks a long way off today as he pulls down his last workshed to prevent further looting. We're paid. How much have you paid? How much you put in? How much? 600 million, Fata. 600 million? Mm. Uh, help me, uh, 10, 12 million bucks? No, about 8 million. 8 million dollars. Mm. And, uh, and now they're wanting to rescind? Well, they wanted to rescind, uh, yes. They want to give any of the money back? No, of course not. Jean-Jacques Saban and Pierre Corman are leaders of the landowners group on this bay and have a rather different story to tell. That Jessup's group promised to build a grand hotel that would provide scores of permanent jobs for their people, not a suburb. And now people, they got hungry because only harem about subdivision through this point. So you didn't agree to the uh, subdivision. You didn't want the subdivision. No, you wanted the last phase, the uh, resort. Uh, the resort. That's why uh, all man from this that fella area, only put in roadblock because they don't agree for the subdivision. So what sort of thing did they tell you about? What did? Uh, how did they talk about this hotel? Did they talk about this hotel as a big, big thing and a big project? This, what did this hotel only tell them say. In Bahami, one the biggest hotel in South Pacific. And this bay, Bali built him about five resorts. Five resorts. The original uh, dream that was portrayed to them of having uh, a hotel of 400 rooms sitting on Edmat Bay is totally unfeasible in anywhere in the South Pacific at the moment. Because it may be unfeasible, but it was a dream that was pitched that by Jeffrey's company. To the country. A dream uh, that made the people of Ericor give up this spectacular bay. They will never let them, but once they come to them, say, resort, block give them walk along all people of the village. Then they will say, okay, yes. Jean-Jacques and Pierre are now determined to revoke the lease for breach of contract or fight in the courts or on the beaches to keep the company out. Uh, finished. Huh? It's finished. And uh, will he get his money back? This is... Uh, you're lost. He's lost. <laughs> this is your lost because... <laughs> so, if you, you don't comply with this, so you lost everything. Judgments giving formal title to tribal land are now rolling out of the courts. One recent judgment is likely to make Chief Andrew Pakoa and his clan extremely rich. All of this land from here on is uh, your land, huh? Yes. Pakoa has been given clear title to thousands of hectares near Port Vila, including title to land that former Australian PM Paul Keating and his associates are hoping to develop. Because before it was a 
public beach. As we drive out to see his land, we pass what was until recently Port Vila's main beach, now leased out to developers and totally fenced off. The traditional landowners put the fence up? Or no, the it's, you see the developers. The, the, the developers. The developers have put yeah. the fence up for miles here. For miles here. The same fence could cause a lot of financial pain to Paul Keating. He and his associate, Bruce MacDonald, have outlaid more than two million dollars on a long-term lease of this land, with plans for hundreds of residential lots and a beachside resort. A grand plan, but there may not be any beach to go with it. Chief Pakoa has now been given title to the entire coastal strip abutting the Keating MacDonald lease, a strip previously regarded as public land. They don't have this crucial strip, is what you're saying? This piece of land no. from here to the beach? So the land is my land. And, uh, they thought they could... That name, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I knew him, I saw him from TV. Yeah. And he came to Vanuatu sometimes. Uh. To have a look, huh? Yes. And uh, you never met him? No, I've never. No. Has uh, Mr. McDonald uh, talked about him? Oh yes, he talked about him uh, very much on this project and he said, Chief, you've got to remember, this is the former Prime Minister of Australia. He's a big man. If he, if he thinks that he had confidence in Vanuatu to invest in, this must be a, a chance that you you help uh, him and us and everybody uh, to kick off this project. I said, okay, that's fine. Then what else? <laughs> <laughs> Back in Pango, Ricky Taleo's family have just learned that their piece of coastal land has just been sold. An envelope has been delivered to them containing their payment. Just a few dollars, two hundred dollars, that's... The Taleos had allowed a landless family to stay on some of their property. That family registered the land as theirs and have just sold it. You're going to give it back, huh? Yes. As Ricky approaches to return the money from where it came, the man that sold the land disappears. His wife meets Ricky. At best, the fight that is brewing here will be settled in court. More likely, it will be one more bitter feud tearing the village apart. A fuming Ricky joins with Graham Pattis and his brother John as they reflect on what they've lost and the prospect of soon being fenced out of their land by new foreign neighbours. So will this be trouble if, uh, say, a New Zealand man, Australian man... Of course it's trouble. Yeah. They, 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 they'll come and they'll face trouble. Big trouble. I'll plan the house. Someone tries to chase me there, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to threaten him. Get a small knife, just put it right in his neck. This is my land. In Vanuatu, the thirst that Australian and other foreigners have for waterfront is eating away at much more than just coastal land. Some harsh words.